presented to the Farmaish of Chagar um, because some of our uh, audience uh, viewers have responded and requested ke ami khub moda khub vibration energy hazrat e bedila ki bakuli tamam spiritual maya mufahmiyat yana welcome to the hazara pioneers library where the stories are brought to life before your very eyes on amunji at magic tv our chapter of pain and suffering, of misery, of the prisoners of war, led by Gulbegum, is now in an Afghan garden house of the Colonel Farad Shah. What goes on in a scene in a harem sarai, an Afghan harem sarai? What are the scenes? Let's introduce you. Let's take you further into the story of a vizier's daughter, the novel published in 1900 by Lilius Hamilton, the court physician of the then King of Kabul, Abdul Rahman, uh, as a court physician. An inmate of an Afghan harem. Before you see what goes on in a harem, you see how the inmates bandia ek the harem banda. The sun was visible above the wall of the enclosure where, which bound their horizon when the party from the Hazara hills awoke on the following morning. Musafirai Kwaistan Hazara Kyal Dazi Bagrasida Chishut Kaftau Dramat Nami Khoda, what must these people be thinking of us? Halima exclaimed as she pulled her shawl from over her head to admit the full light of the day to her still sleepy eyes. They can only think that we have traveled far, which indeed we have, and were very much fatigued, which indeed we were, her sister-in-law replied anxiously. She did not mention in all her life having overslept herself so to such an extent. There is nothing more or less for them to think, Gulbegum said, laughing. Aunt, Halei, lend me your comb. 
I'm Shaneh Marbidi. You're the only one that has such a, a thing. My hair is just like a camel's beard. I'm going to make a rigid structure. I'm going to make a rigid structure. I'm going to make a rigid structure. She moved towards the window and looked out. Everyone must have gone out to work, she said. There isn't a soul about the courtyard. I can't see over to the other side of the wall. Come, mother, look. It was kind of them to let us go on sleeping undisturbed. Shireen said quietly, It looks as if we were going to be properly treated here and not made regular slaves of. Oh, how I should like to go out. Gulbegum exclaimed suddenly. I should love to be down among those trees and flowers. Come, Shireen, as everyone is out, there is no reason why we should not go out too. Soon they were in the quadrangle that divided this inner shrub planted enclosure from the beautiful orchard and garden beyond. Did you ever see anything like these flowers? Gulbegum remarked to her cousin. What colors? They're well enough, Shireen said placidly, hardly noticing them. But what I like is this. Look here, just think what grapes we shall have later on. And raisins too, Kishmisham, Badazangur, and Seikutaro, Maya. I dare say they are almond trees over the other side of the wall. Let us go through and see what there is. So they made their way towards the door, but it was locked. Oh, how tiresome. They have gone and left us locked in. Shirin went on. I suppose they thought we should run away, Gulbegum said thoughtfully. Not likely. With that old doorkeeper standing as watchdog over the entrance outside. Be careful, Gulbegum said. Someone is watching us. Everyone has gone out. Don't let us even look as though we were trying to run away, okay? Come, let us go and speak to her. And as they crossed the garden, a long-tailed Afghan magpie flew over their heads. What flew over their heads? A long-tailed Afghan magpie. What is that? This is Afghan magpie. Uh, similar. This is not Afghan magpie. This is magpie. This is a bird from the crow family. Any magpie is loved in Norway. This is a Norwegian magpie. But in Afghan, they are considered as ill luck. Superstition. And as they crossed the garden, a long-tailed Afghan magpie flew over their heads. Khuda, what bad luck? Ona bad bakhti, Shirin exclaimed anxiously. Our coming here is to bring us no good. What it can it mean, Gulbegum? It means that the poor bird has lost its mate, those khurgumkada, and has gone to look for it. I should think, 
Banazarim. Her cousin said with some appearance of indifference. But as a matter of fact, she wished the bird had not taken it into its head to fly over them just then. Look at that lovely creature, Shireen. What a color! Did you ever see anything so beautiful? It was a yellow oriole. A Dukhtari Sufi, as the Afghans call it. I just looked up on Google Images and I found Dukhtari Sufi as well for you, which is a yellow oriole. This is it. This is a yellow oriole. In Afghans, they call it Dukhtari Sufi. So, now we are going to see Dukhtari Sufi. Ah, that must mean brightness after trouble, surely. Oh, yani ki baad az badbakhti bas khushbakhti maya. I don't mind a little trouble first if things will only end up well. Agar aap bach khub bach khair ma zamad mikshum. I'm tired of being a war prisoner already. Ma khasta shudo maz ya siri. Aren't you gul begum? And I'm so hungry. I should like some bread and sour curd, wouldn't you? Yes, I shouldn't refuse it. Gulbegum answered smilingly. It will take us some time to eat ourselves satisfied. After all the starving we have been having, let us ask that woman. She doesn't look bad and she's got something in her lap. She looks as if she were preparing food of some sort. The woman to whom they alluded ceased looking at the girls when she found she had been observed and kept her eyes fixed at her work. We arrived here last night, Gulbegum said, addressing her, and though we did have some supper before we went to bed, we are very hungry now. The woman said nothing, but handed them some young vegetables she was paring and cleaning. They were sweet, juicy, and the girls were glad to have anything to eat. They were so hungry. Has everyone gone out to work? Shireen asked after a pause. The woman only look, shook her head and went quietly on with her work. I wonder if she is a stranger and does not understand us, Shireen remarked again. Gulbegum was very silent. She had a sense of something uncanny in presence of this strange, silent woman. And instinctively she looked first at the walls, then at the doors they had tried and had found locked. I mean, the chim shake the builder was a day while there he said, Look at that, don't the war more. I hear him even. What time do you expect the others back? Shireen asked again. Will they be away all day? The woman shook her head and shrugged her shoulder at the same time, much as a French woman might do who wished to say that she neither knew nor cared. Why don't you speak? Are you not allowed to? Don't you understand? The girl went on. We don't want to do you any harm. But we are strangers. And we want to know something of the household we have come to. For answer, the woman looked around furtively towards the house and then round the garden. Then seeing no one else about, 
she touched Shirin's hand, knocking, beckoning to her to look into her mouth. This is my silk. This is which she opened wide, throwing back her head as she did so. The girl recoiled in horror. The woman had no tongue. It had evidently been cut off, and the wound was not quite healed yet. Zaham Shitazeh. Gulbegum shivered. My God, she murmured, and instantly the woman bent down her head again and went on with her work. Then motioned to the girls to leave her. As they turned, the slave who had brought them their meal the night before came down the steps and towards them. Amudishauna. No kari mahal. I thought you must all be out, Gulbegum said. Addressing her. We are sorry, but we slept very late. We were fatigued after our journey. It was so hot. Ah, you went to bed early, and so you woke early, I suppose. The girl, thus addressed, returned quite pleasantly. What are you eating here? Ram's horns. Did you get them from Nokra? Ram's horns. What are what is Ram's horns? Ram's horns yani Ram yani amu buz shakshit daura. Lekini vegetable to kemoga any ram's horns ki shirina juicy ya. Murji shirin. دمزی قبیله مثل رمز هانز بودی ایمه میتوند دور خورده زی قطعه رو را شرخ بوز نمیشته We got them from that old woman there What a dreadful creature she is Shirin broke in She has just shown us her mouth The poor wretch has got no tongue The slave girl looked Shirin up and down Gulbegum, she knew about. But who was this talkative piece of goods who spoke aloud in the daytime of matters that should not even be whispered at midnight? Yes, Bulbul, what is it? The word is just a person as well. Job on a cute to Niz Fishau, the Shuk Shukuf, the name it, and either Rui Rose to Elan Gadere. You had better look to your ways, Ushtubasha, Arkasestetu, and try to keep your own tongue a little more in control, she said, or you too may find yourself in like condition someday. You are too forward. Zatfirinashu, Farasha knows how to deal with women who have too much to say. He will have no busy bodies here. Chotarina Quinji. Shireen reddened. Yaktav Surkshut Shireen. Then turned pale with some zarchut and moved nearer her cousin as though seeking protection. Push the Gulbegum push. Al Khauf. Oh, you need not be afraid, the girl said, noting the gesture. I'm only warning you. Keep your eyes down and your ears closed. Gosh kar chimkor. And your mouth shut in this house. And it will be so much the better for you. Come, you said you were hungry. Would you like some bread and curd? There is some fresh just come in and Bibi won't be ready to wake yet this long time. Is she ill? asked Shireen. The girl looked at her again. And a contemptuous curl on her lips. Oh, I can prophesy your fate at a glance. 
Fast tu tiches de nia. And what's more, you won't have long to wait for it to come to you. Y bad bakhtir zud de sarkh mayra, yani zubani khot de barit mayra. You want to know too much in too short a time, eh? And you can't take a hint when it's given to you. Egishararam namu famitu. Dan khoban girfta na mitani. You will be sitting on a stool by Nukra holding your mouth before a month is over. Warning, Midum. The Yagma Hot for Pish Nukra Nashan Dono Menji. Ban bigger than her. Again, Shireen reddened up to the eyes. And this time the tears started into them. What had she done? That this girl should speak to her so she had asked nothing wrong, only a simple question. Instinctively, as Gulbegum had done, her eyes wandered to the high walls and to the blood bolted door. Her tormentor was not slow to notice this gesture either. And seeing how easily she could terrify this girl, she went on provokingly. Ah, you need not look at either walls or doors. They are strong and high. No one has ever been known to overcome either. But we have strong things inside. If you show a disposition to get away, we shall have to keep our eyes on you. I see. Mm -mm. Shirin was by this time fairly cowed and only hung her head, pouting. Gulbegum, more to try the girl that than anything, smiled knowingly at her. She replied with something not very unlike a wink, which was distinctly reassuring, and presently all three sat on the steps, commenced their breakfast of delicious newly baked bread and sour curd. Seldom had the Hazaras tasted anything more entirely to their liking. And as there was no further mention made of the possible consequences of indiscreet talking, Shireen gradually became pacified. Towards noon, the girls noticed considerable stir about the house. Several slaves or servants passed by and glanced at them. And then the old doorkeeper came through the, the heavy garden door and disappeared into one of the rooms at the side of the, of the chief entrance, leaving his shoes on the steps. He had the commandant's letter to Colonel Farhad Shah in his hand. Gulbegum noticed it at once. When he came out, he went up to where the girls were sitting and addressed them. Bibi is having her tea now, but when she has finished, she will send for you. Salam her respectfully and wait always for her to address you first. It is wise not to say too much, he said in a low tone, she is a great lady and it is not well to dispute her wishes. When Agha comes home, you will be given your position in the household. Till then, you must put up with whatever happens to turn up. Gulbegum bowed her acknowledgments. It is of your kindness that you tell us this, she said. The old man seemed quite pleased and was moving away when the girls addressed him again hurriedly. Will you let me walk in the big garden? 
under the trees this evening? She asked. Mithunum ammi pishina munjak rabor mdamin bag among the men. Kadmartiko, the old man said, surprised. How could I do that? In my country, the woman can walk about everywhere, she said. Is it not so here? The mulgi azra khu mardiko khatino tama marja ek mora ek jai mora. No, it is not. But I will try to give you a chance of getting into the garden. If you were ordinary Hazara, I would ask Bibi to let you work there. We are short of men, and there is a good deal to do at this season. But the master might not like it. اگر تو یکم معمولی از رام بودی خم تو دکار خود من مگفتم بیبیر کی بیل کی ما خدا مخفت بورند باغ لیکن تو معلوم نی تو کی دیگه علی تو دختری وزیری کی مشیری خدا ار معلوم تو بیل کاغا بایا کی قسمت دست ور فیصله کنه که تو دکجای بیش نی او I would like to work in the garden Will be going interrupted him eagerly Will you ask if I may میتونم بامی پلیز اجازه بگیرین بریم I'll see Sayul Kanoma, the old man said again, I must not be seen talking too long with you now, but I'll do my best for you. And then, when Aga comes home, I shall expect you to remember my services. I shall never forget your kindness, Gulbegum said quite sincerely. She was still thinking of the garden of which she had caught glimpse in the light of the setting sun. And she was inclined to think well of anyone who would get her an entry into it. But soon her idea of garden and flowers and scents were thrown to the winds. What happened? You are to bring your attendants and come and speak to Bibi, one of the slave girls told her, and Gulbegum went upstairs to summon her mother and aunt. Chapter 19 closes here. My dear Nosago, grandchildren of the grandfather, of the grandmasters, of the Hazara pioneers standard. The story is getting into a lot of detail and we would like your um, comments about the narration. This is the only uh, possibility at the moment that we uh, can at least present this story to you as a common painful heritage. It may not be a historical reference. A Vazir's Daughter, The Tale of the Hazara War by Lilies Hamilton, printed in 1900, may not be a historical document to rely upon, but it's a reflection, just like a painting, a letter, something that somebody saw and couldn't say it, had to say it in a story so painful, so much of which is better kept unknown. But that comes to the destiny of the people of the war and migration. What kind of questions we would like to ask about the fate that befell the Hazaras for 130 years or 50 years or 200 years? We're going to the recent history only. What is the 21st century young Nosogo of the Hazaras Bakulo are going to do? is our question. And questions are the creative acts of intelligence. That's why we ask the question, are you a warrior in a garden or a gardener in a war? Haikido Norozawa. Balaibur.